So a friend of mine, she calls me up and she says, Andrew, uh, I've got 30 miles of, of range. Will I get to the destination? And I said, I don't know. What's your battery percentage? And she doesn't know, does she? Because she has a Peugeot E2008 and it doesn't tell you the battery percentage. And the only way of working out a trip with any degree of accuracy is using the battery percentage. And I've gone about this, gone on about this before, right? So it got me thinking. All EVs should have a minimum specification. All EVs, to be a good EV, should have certain things that makes it a good EV. Not just a good car, but a good EV. I was looking, bear with me, I was looking at a box of cereal and it has this nutritional information at the bottom there. I don't know whether you can see it because it's probably out of focus. Down here, we've got nutritional information and that has your, your fat and sugar and all that sort of stuff. And I was thinking maybe EVs should have something like that. Maybe EVs should have the basic stuff that you would expect every EV to have. And you could go through specifications and maybe very quickly see if it has the basics. So what are the basics? Well, first of all, battery percentage. So as I've spoken about before, and I've spoken about this in length because of the DS3 review as well, every car should have the battery percentage. If it doesn't have that, if it doesn't have the battery percentage, then you're a bit lost, really, if, you've got a, if you're trying to make a journey schedule. If you don't have that, then it's very difficult to work out your journey with any degree of accuracy because really you start going up a hill and the range will start dropping. And it's weird, I mean that's basic stuff isn't it? Just knowing your battery percentage. So I think every EV should have that. That's what must my number one thing personally. But there are other things as well and it's weird how many EVs just don't have this sort of stuff. Charging speed, when I plug into a charger I want to know what speed I'm getting. And that's really important because if you're plugged into a charger and it's not working very well, and that happens sometimes, unfortunately, some chargers aren't going full speed, you might not know. And for it to, for it to give a rough idea of the time it'll take is not really good enough. I, I want to see numbers. I want to see if I know a car is supposed to charge, let's say, at 77 kilowatts and it's not getting anywhere close to that, then I'll, I'll think, wait a minute, what's going on? So I do think charging speed is something that should be on every EV. It's kind of basic stuff. Again, the car knows what the charging speed is. It's not difficult. It just has to show it on the screen. And a lot of, char I mean, all chargers should have it as well, actually, but it's, a, it's weird, actually, quite a few chargers don't. So charging speed, got battery percentage charging speed. They're two things. I have a real bee in my bonnet about these things. But on top of that, we've got a charging timer. Now I, I rely on the charging timer to to charge just between the cheap hours of electricity at night, so half 12 to half 4, it's 5 pence per kilowatt hour, which is very, very cheap, and I charge just at that moment. Now, some EVs don't let you set a timer. My Leaf does. Bear in mind, my Leaf is like 6 years old, and that does, but new EVs, they don't always have that. Uh, the DS3, it allowed you to start the time, but it didn't, it didn't allow you to set an end time. So that's another kind of really obvious thing, I think. Um, and you know, a lot of chargers do have the ability to actually do that inside the charger themselves. So you can set it inside the charger, and I can, I can with my Zappi. But not all chargers are like that. Not all, they're not all that smart. Some of them are quite dumb, really, and you need to be able to set it in the car. Basic kind of, it's basic scheduling kind of stuff. And not only that, we should have a charging limit as well, because it's not always great to charge to 100% all the time. My Kia e Nero, for instance, it it recommended that you don't charge to 100%. Where if you like do it once once every two months or something like that, or once a month, it's it's good to do it. So it rebalances the cells and it tells you the then it has an idea of the correct range and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it should allow you to set a charging limit, even if it's just 80%, because 80% is quite quite a nice amount really. If you charge at 80% most of the time, then your battery will last longer. Granted, a lot of modern electric cars actually doesn't matter quite so much now. The battery management systems are so good that the battery will still last quite a while, even if you charge at 100% all the time. But if you really run, if you want to prolong the battery, then charging to something like 80% is good for it. What I always do is charge to 80 all the time, and then if I'm going on a long journey, I do 100%, and then uh, that's my trick. So. That I should be able to set in the car. 
they get weird. A lot of cars don't have that kind of thing. Now the big one, the big one that 99% of the EVs just don't do is proper navigation. I, you need to be able to tell it where you want to go and it should tell you which charges you should charge at. Now this is, this is actually quite difficult and that's why most electric cars don't have it because it, it's not an easy thing for them to do. But they should do it because it's not like just refueling somewhere. You know, I know if I see a BP logo or I see a Shell or whatever, whatever the garage is, I know I can go there and get petrol. And I'll go there and it'll take five minutes to fill up and then I'll be on my way. Unfortunately, at the moment, it takes a bit of planning with electric cars. As you know, you do have to just think a little bit further ahead and just think, well, OK, what if that charger is not working? I've got to go there and blah, blah, blah and all that sort of stuff. And what if I go to a charger and there are people using it and then I've got to wait a while? which to be honest, I don't think has ever happened to me. In all my years of driving EV, that's never happened, but it does happen to people. So my car should be able to tell me where I have to charge and it should tell me who, if there's anyone using it. And I did, it should tell me how much it will cost. Now, Teslas do this. Teslas obviously have their own supercharger network, which is the easiest thing on earth. You go there and you plug in and it just starts charging but it will also tell you other chargers from uh, other rapid chargers from other brands. So, uh, so Tesla's do this. Tesla's do this so well that it makes every other EV seem like a complete joke. And there are just a couple of exceptions that I know about. I think the Jaguar I-Pace, I think does this sort of thing now and the Polestar 2 and the Volvo XC40, I believe they're the ones that do this. Um, I don't know about I don't know about any others. Most certainly don't. My e-Nero certainly didn't. My Fiat 500e, you know, I love this car, but it will it will tell it if I if I plot a course to somewhere, it will tell me I'm going to run out of charge, even whether I am or not. It doesn't know. It's too stupid to know. So that's basic. What I would consider basic stuff, as in it's not basic for them to do, but it's basic that it should be in the car. Every EV should have that. It's like essential. It's essential. Now, in a few years down the line, we're not going to need this because you will just get used to seeing logos and you'll get used to seeing, if you see a BP garage, you'll know that there's a charger there or hopefully a few chargers that you can use. But at the moment, we're not at that stage and it's we're not going to be at that stage for a long time. And that's even in the UK. The UK is much better than a lot of countries, but even now here, it's like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on a drive, for instance, without having a little bit of an idea where I might want to charge. So uh, that's something that has to be built into the car, really. You shouldn't have to rely on apps. That's the thing, because at the moment I do. In fact, most people do. You download something like a better route planner or zap map to work out your route, and you shouldn't have to. Your car should do it for you. It's a ridiculous situation. Tesla get it right. Now, this is why Tesla owners, one of the reasons why Tesla owners are so damn smug, and they're justifiably so, because Teslas are amazing. Hire a Tesla and just just do it. Just put in the sat now where you want to go and it tells you. And it tells you where you need to charge. It tells you what your state of charge will be when you get there. They are amazing for this kind of thing. Now, Teslas are not perfect and they're not perfect for everyone. And um, I personally prefer the body shape of other, other cars around at the moment. But um, they get that right. I think they're the basic things every car should have, every EV should have. Uh, Tesla get all of that so they get like full yes 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 to all of those different things the Fiat 500e is pretty good um, the Leaf is pretty good the e-Nero is very good other than the navigation but a lot of them like the poor old DS didn't manage to do any of that in fact which is one of the reasons I was hating on that car so much because from a technical level it just didn't feel like it should have been an EV it was like someone's just stuck an electric powertrain and a battery inside a car and expected it to work and it doesn't work like that. My friend's Peugeot E 2008 is a really nice car to drive, it's lovely, I think it looks nice considering it's SUV style, it looks quite cool and she's got it in red which looks great but it, it's not a good EV, I've got, to, I've got to admit it's not a good EV. So there are, other, there are other things that make of course make a good EV, you've got the charging speed, you've got the efficiency and you've got the size of the battery and therefore the, the range of course but they're all things that 
are kind of variable. I mean, I don't care too much about a lot of that stuff. If I, if I was getting a cheap car, I wouldn't care if it charged too quickly or if the range was massive, because I wouldn't really need it if I was looking for a second car. So all of those things are important, but they're a little bit more, you know, I don't care too much. You know, you can, if you spend a lot of money, you would expect a better range and things like that. But maybe you prioritize design instead of that kind of thing. But these things I've just mentioned, battery percentage, charging speed, charging limit, charging timer, and navigation, all of that I think is basic. That should be basic kit. And even in, for instance, something like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is coming out very soon, or it is out for some people, even that I don't think has the navigation the, like I'm talking about. Even that doesn't have it, I, I think. So these are things that car makers all need to get right. And I feel like we should be pestering manufacturers to get this right. There are other things you might consider really important, like over-the-air updates. That's when your car updates itself. Again, Teslas do it. Um, people will have a Tesla for years and then they, they, feel, they feel like they've got a new car every few months when it gets updated. Now, some people like that and some people don't. Some people don't just don't like the idea of getting in a car and having it update itself, because what if you know, it is a computer effectively, what if something crashes and then you crash? Now, I don't know if that ever happened with a Tesla. I don't know, but um, I suppose the possibility is there. So that makes people a bit nervous about over-the-air updates. But at the same time, I don't like the idea of having to go to a dealer and having to pay them money to do an update, which is what it was like in my Kia e-Nero. Um, my Fiat 500e actually has some software updates and that has to go to the dealer but they will do that free of charge so it differs from manufacturer to manufacturer but if it was all over the air then that would certainly make things a lot easier so what else could there be apps i suppose it's pretty pretty every car i suppose should have an app but even then i don't i don't think it matters too much to be honest the, the app i mean it's not something that i really feel i need but it's certainly nice to have another thing that you might think would be good to show on there would be the amount of CO2 used in the production of a car, which would be quite good, I think. Um, I believe Volkswagen, I think their cars are now CO2 neutral, so that's great. The CO2 as in the amount of fossil fuels they're burning to generate batteries and all that sort of stuff. As time goes on, of course, as more factories get solar panels on the roof and all the rest of it, and as our processes improve, then that will get better and better. Because at the moment, CO2 is one of those things that if you get in an argument with anyone that loves their fossil fuel, that's one of the things they'll say. They'll say, well, the amount of CO2 used for electric cars is far worse than me driving a diesel for five years. And um, that's been debunked, by the way. That's absolute rubbish. But um, that's what they'll say. So that's something else that would be good. But what do you think? Is there anything that you, that you find really important for an electric car to have? And I realise that in my list, there are some amazing cars. In fact, some ama amazing EVs that actually don't have some of the things that I've mentioned, like, for instance, the Jaguar I-Pace. I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? But the, the I-Pace, I don't think, allows you to set a charging limit or a charging timer. I can't remember which. And that's something that... That's a ground-up EV, right? So that should kind of have that sort of stuff. Um, but there might be other examples. I don't know. And I mean, you might be driving around in an EV and you just might not care about all that stuff. And I, I freely admit that... I've, this is a kind of a picky list but at the same time I just think for me that's the sort of important stuff I would I would avoid an electric car that doesn't have certainly that like battery percentage now talking about battery percentage I have heard that Peugeot are they're starting to do updates I believe if you take your e E208 into a dealer I think they can do an update and you will get now the battery percentage so it'll be interesting to see if all the other PSA Stellantis cars if they all get that you know if they all like the ds3 and um, the Vauxhall Corsa or the Opel Corsa um, if they all start getting that that would be really good um, so we're getting there we're getting there but really the year 2021 and it's baffling to me that we have some of these things are just absent in EVs so you tell me in the comments please tell me in the comments what you think cars should have if you buy an EV what should it have What's the basic stuff for you? Because um, I would love to hear what you think. So thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll catch you later. Bye for now.